Thank you. All right. So today we talk about a very important aspect of uh, big data, and that is the ETL, standing for extract, transform, and load. These are three major pieces that one has to pay attention to when dealing with data. And actually, in essence, you have been doing that with some of your uh, SAS uh, programs. You're extracting data from somewhere, doing something with it, and then somehow writing that to possibly another medium or a set of media. My intention today is to basically give you a brief view of the ETL and I am going to give you also uh, something that my research deals with and uh, two, of the, two of the slides here out of the seven or eight slides that we have deal ba basically with some research that I uh, uh, perform. So here, when we talk about <coughs> extraction, we're dealing with extraction of data from a variety of sources. The sources could be databases, they could be um, structured information from um, things like spreadsheets, for example, where you know the structure, or sometimes you're dealing with textual data, which you don't have really uh, an understanding of how the width of each field would be, it could be variable fields. Um, the media that you would be dealing with, or you could be dealing with, are um, uh, homogeneous media, or, in other words, I have exactly the same uh, source for uh, the data, or sometimes you are pulling the information from a variety of sources all simultaneously. So this, the latter, is the heterogeneous uh, uh, sources. Um, and then you have the transformation of uh, the data. And in there, Basically, you are looking at the, uh, the source information and you know what the target requires and there is a, an area in the middle where you actually have to transform all these sources, whether they are homogeneous or uh, heterogeneous, all into one structure that fits into your destination or your loading process. Uh, <clears throat> The destination could be, again, like the source, could be um, database files, structured or unstructured, object-oriented or SQL-based. They could be flat files, they could be spreadsheets, they could, be, they could have a variety of different forms that will uh, be required by uh, the business entity. Um, if you look here, the complexity of the extraction process is not only limited to the, uh, the sources from which we are pulling the data, but also there are situations where you could actually have tables that look similar with, table, with uh, column heads that are very much uh, looking the same, 
but inside the data they mean totally different things. I'm going to show you one of the examples that I have had here. If you look at this, um, one of my uh, research projects is to deal with uh, attention deficit hyperact hyperactivity uh, disorder, which basically um, is, a, is a medical condition uh, in which uh, the, the child is not well focused, they, they are hyperactive, and you might have heard uh, about ADHD. Um, in the UK, there has been three different uh, data sets dealing with psychological morbidity in general. One that was performed in 1993, and one was performed in 2000, and the third was performed in 2007. And we're talking about a huge uh, um, set for each of those, a huge amount of data within each. The problem that we have faced is that doctors noticed that early on in 1993 and 2000, the word ADHD was not there. So there, you could not ask whether the child had ADHD or not. But there were questions that actually, based on the question, the person who does the questionnaire or the, the, the person who evaluates the questionnaire later on will understand whether the child has or does not have a uh, ADHD. <coughs> but when it comes to a system, it is not really very easy to be able to pull from that whether the child does or does not have an ADHD. But a number of these different questions, when combined, will tell us whether the child did have these symptoms or not, and as such was classified as having or diagnosed as having the AD or the ADHD or not. In 2007, they have actually alleviated that. They have modified the questionnaire and they have defined, uh, uh, modified the column heads, headers so that there is explicit questions about whether the child has or does not have. So what is the problem? The problem is from, a, uh, from a, a policy standpoint, like the NHS, would be interested in really providing a long-term solution for this kind of case. But they need to have enough information over an extended period of time that will enable, uh, enable them <coughs> to actually provide the support for these cases. And we're talking about maybe something like 8% of the world population having this kind of uh, uh, diagnosis. So it is, it is a very important thing to deal with. So from a data standpoint, we need now to have a, a, some sort of a, a, a translation mechanism that will enable us to move from the old systems, and now we have two different systems, 1993 and the other is 2000, into the most current, which is 2007. This is one of the difficulties that we have. Now, if you look at the tables, each of these tables, in 1993, um, we had over um, 1,300 columns. So you are collecting about 1,300 columns. These are your variables with a population of about 50 or 55 million people within this country. So this is a huge amount of data that we have to sift through. So you could imagine that each data set could actually be in the order of one, a few terabytes of, uh, of data. Combine that with the other two and being able to make one story that we can uh, uh, discuss from these three different sets. So this is just one example of how the sources uh, would complicate the ability to really uh, extract the information. <coughs> Transforming the data 
into something that makes sense to the, uh, the, the stakeholders. Um, we're dealing with, if I give you a very simple example, and you might have experienced that in your uh, SAS exercises, that if you have a firm, a financial firm, that has branches, let's say, in the UK and in the US and elsewhere, where the currency is different, but the database is exactly the same. And as such, you would like to reflect the currency of the user. So at one point in time, you want to do the transaction in dollars. In another, by another user, you will have the pound sterling or the euro or whatever other. All in one column. So now you can see the difficulty of even moving from a different number of currencies into one unified currency. Or, if you don't want to do that, you want to be able to identify which currency you are dealing with, which, where. Number two, the date and time. The formats of the date and time are also problematic because in certain cases you would have, as in, in, in this country, you would have the day mentioned first, followed by the month, followed by the year. Elsewhere, in the US, the month, the day, and the year. Yet, somewhere else, they like to deal with the year, month, and day. So now, that adds to the complexity of the transformation process. So, uh, So as such, you need to be able to pay attention to the structure of this data while you are transforming from this end to eventually this end. Now, there are situations where you have to deal with uh, missing data, for example. How will you be able to deal with missing data? Or, um, or um, abnormalities within the data. So you have to really apply that within uh, the transform, transformation process. Now, whatever we said about the extraction process, to some extent will apply to the load process because, again, we do not know what the, uh, the um, the target system would be. Of course, if we're dealing with um, um, you know, certain institutions where they like to have their um, data eventually done within an SQL-based relational uh, uh, database, such as Oracle or MySQL or whatever, then this will have some requirements that we have to impose on the data as we migrate it from the transformation into the uh, final form of loading. If you're dealing with an object-oriented, or you're dealing with just flat files, or comma-separated, wh whatever the case is, then these will actually be require requirements that we have to impose on my final destination. As such, there would be a process of cleansing the data as we migrate from here to here. Again, the situations where uh, you need to pay attention to the um, uh, di uh, referential integrity. If you are moving, for example, to a SQL base or a, a relational model, then referential integrity is a very important aspect. Making sure that I have all the primary components be there. So in other words, there would be no entry within the database that actually does not have a, uh, a reference like a primary key, okay? Um, so, in essence, you have seen part of these three processes within most of the exercises that you have been done after probably the first uh, four or five uh, different uh, uh, tutorials within SAS. Now, I think what you will need to do is you're going to take that 
into now a, uh, a practical kind of approach and you will apply that to the, the assignment that you have with working in groups of two. So the type of activity that you would engage in is to produce a diagram of the key stages within the ETL. You will identify the relevant SAS steps for each of those steps. You locate the data. And then you define a simple question to ask of the data that you have. What is it exactly that you want out of the data? Perform the extraction. You do the transformation within SAS. And finally, you will have an output. And of course, you want to make sure that you test that so that all the um, bugs, so to speak, will have been shaken out. Okay. Um, this is really um, what I wanted to share with you today. And if you have any questions, I would like to answer it. Good question, thank you. What happens really is, let's say that we have a, when we deal with uh, something like the uh, ADHD, we do not normally look at the whole file all at once, but we take small sample of it so that we can actually eyeball it and have an understanding of the, how the data is presented there. Okay, so as such, uh, you will have to really take a, the, the, a small data set, a sample, 10, 12, 15, 100, depending on how, you know, what you feel comfortable with, but make sense that the data size that you have is a true representation of the data set. And then you eyeball it, and you see what the requirements are the business requirements on the data that you have so that you would be able to transform them properly. So that is a very important step. Before you really, it's, it's not, it is an iterative process. So you will have to keep on doing this several times before you finally get to what you need to have. Um, the tra like, can you expand on transform? I mean, what does it in entail, for instance, like? Excuse what's me. The, what's the process of transforming? Repeat that again, please. I got um, distracted here. In regards to transform, can you expand on it? I mean, what, what does it entail? Like, how would you go about transforming data? All right. For example, um, transforming the data, basically, you have a target, a business target. You want to eventually put the data that you have received from the extraction process for example, I'm interested not in gender, but I'm interested in a family, for example. So at that time, the F and M, or one and two, will drop, but you combine them into one new entity okay. called family. So in that, that's called the transformation. Because this end process here, which is the loading process, is not interested in the details. It's interested in the final outcome. Okay. <laughs> Have a drink of water. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the deadline? Yeah. Uh, I think Richard shares, uh, shared that with you. Um, I would be able to answer that next time I see you. I don't have the deadline with me. I think that's for the activity that's fine. He's asking about that. 
Uh, I think he said next week you would have to start working on that. Um, I, let me tell you, uh, I think what I would like for you to do is to go and check um,